remember we done a gig when we had a number one hit. White Shade of Pearl, of course. Well, we had a dressing room with no roof on it. <laughs> Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Yes. And it was a the toilet, the car seat. It was like all broken. We only had the one toilet. I remember it, definitely remember it. The, the, it was some horrible promoter up north. It had no roof on. Just and, it, and uh, lucky it was wasn't raining. Well, I remember that when we first. It would have been the summer, wouldn't it? I mean, it would have summer. Yeah. yeah, when it was a summer record, like the show, and it was, it was released in June or something. Wasn't May. It? Was it May? Oh, May. Well, they are right. May '67. So by the time it was a hit. It was definitely summer. Yeah. We went to France quite a bit, didn't we, in those first sort of months? We did go to France quite like that. But as I was saying, the, 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 what we did after I started playing my little bark bits in the song, and everyone said, oh, that's actually sounding quite good, that. Maybe that should be our single. Well, we then had to sort of think, well, OK, single, be kind of a 10 minute sequence. Okay, so we've got to get it down a bit. So let's try leaving a verse out. It's still about six and a half minutes now, still too long. Cut another verse. And then we played that through and he timed it, and it's just over four minutes. It's a bit long, but we can't cut any more out. It'd be stupid if we cut any more out. So that's it, we had to stick to, to four minutes. Now, the point is with all these, when it was like, four verses. There were lots and lots of instrumental bits because there was an instrumental bit between each verse, you know. So what happened was it would be organ, piano, organ, piano, organ, piano, whatever we'd alternate, Gary and I would alternate. Now cutting it down to um, two verses, there was only going to be three instrumental sections. And Gary sort of took the view that well maybe a bit silly to sort of alternate when there's only three of them anyway so he said well why don't you just do all three but the point is that they it wasn't set at that time they were improvised solos okay so it was never quite the same twice um anyways goes home and thinks oh well we're going to do a demo gosh uh, i suppose i better sort of do whatever i can to make this commercial ah Maybe what I should do is write a definitive solo that's always the same every time. Make it more hooky, more commercial, you know, which will be good for everybody, won't it? You know. So that's what I did. And I came uh, back the next day and said, well, I've got an idea for the solo. Uh, it involves slightly, a couple of bass notes would have to be changed, okay, but, you know, so I, I went, you know, I explained to the bass player what the difference was, you know, we said, well, look, can we try it, see what you think? So we did, and we played it with my new solo in it, and uh, I said, what do you think? And everyone says, yeah, we like that, yeah, we'll adopt that. So that was adopted into the song. But what that solo was, I actually had written that at home. And I'd done it by kind of remembering all my favourite bits to what I'd done in rehearsals and maybe a little extra bit that I just wrote there and there and changing the bass line a bit and all that was done at home. Um, and it was adopted before we even went in and recorded the demo, never mind the master, you know, that, that was adopted as part of the song. It's instantly recognisable by to show the player. You know, the first, like many classics, the first bit is into the, Who's done the, the best cover version in your... Because it's been covered almost by more people than any other song ever. Uh, who's ever done the best cover version? I, to be honest, I don't like any of the cover versions. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a classic. <laughs> um, it's... I, I mean, look, the point is, the... We did that version in the studio. Um, it's not just a question of the, the sort, of, you know, the musicians that we had, uh, what everybody played. It goes beyond that. It was a lucky take. It's like, let's say we'd done the take, and then the engineer said, "Sorry, guys, I screwed up. Can, can we do it again?" Maybe everything would have been different. <laughs> you know, I, I think there was something magical about that take. You know, it's just everybody just had to do exactly the right thing on that one magic take. 
which is why it's never been a cover version, it's never been spot on. That's my thing. I mean, this is one of my hobby horses about records. That what you used to get in the, you know, before the, well, you know, when did the, the age of the control freak really begin? I mean, when they got the sequences and things, you know, which I'm as guilty as anyone of relying on these things, but in, back in the 60s, you know, a band went into a studio to make a record, they got three hours, A side, B side, mix, you know, they might come out with something great, they might come out with something rubbish, but it was all in the lap of the gods, you know, there was, there was this, there was this tremendous um, scope for accidental things to happen. Which there's no accidents anymore, you know, because people just spend a year sequencing a hi-hat or, so, or a bass drum or something, you know, or, or, or overdubbing tambourines, and, you know, it's, nothing is accidental anymore. Everything is so controlled, so deliberate, no surprises. But in those days, it was all sort of like, okay, on goes the red light, best of luck, chaps, here we go, you know. So what is there, what is there on White Shade of Pale that only you know? Only you would know that makes it that that is my original. Because everyone, you know, if something is so good, you know, actually, I did that bit, but it's it's my bit there. But do you know, it's uh, something where, you know, like a Rolls Royce uh, maker will sign a piece of the paintwork somewhere. Most musicians know um, what Matthew is trying to say. Basically, is that. Like he said, it's a magical take. Yeah. If you hear yourself on record, you can pick out whether it's the original or not. Because it's your signature. No, it's, 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 yeah. that's the one that's got the soul of it, the one that's got the originality, the one that we know. That, well, there you go, that's our song. That's Matthew's song. That's well, Matthew playing it. I, I, I know that record. I mean, this would have been about, okay, it's the 30th anniversary, so that would have made it 1997. I remember we were at this thing, I was playing in the band at the time, and we were at Red Hill in this theatre. And I was backstage, but I could hear the sound that was, they were showing films, they were showing video clips, all sorts of things were going on all day long, you know, and I was just backstage maybe eating a bit of a buffet food or something, <laughs> talking to someone, you know. There's all these different versions of White Shade of Pearl, you know, recorded live in Paris, recorded live in Boston, sort of, you know, whatever, like, and I'm just sort of sitting there, I can't remember who I was talking to, and suddenly, um, the record was, that's the record. That's yours. I, I, I don't know, how, that's, there's no, it's, that's what I, I was asking. I, yeah, it's just, there's a sound there, there's some vibe, there's some atmosphere in that actual, magic take. It's just, even if you're talking about Proper Harm, never mind any Lennox or anyone else who's ever done it, if you're just talking about Proper Harm, yeah. I can identify that recording within about the first two notes. Straight away, that's the record. Yeah. You and Bobby are good friends. Are yeah. you looking forward to doing that again? To doing what? Singing, uh, singing playing, White Show, playing, 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 playing and yeah. doing the song again. Not necessarily White Show to Pearl, no. No, because, you know, I, I, I sing, I sing a lot of blues. You do, and they're great. I sing a lot of blues, and that's not hard for Matthew. I know he can handle it. And, and basically, you know, yes, of course we'll do a White Show to Pearl. But, you know, it's not going to be all around a White Show to Pearl. No, I understand. We're going to play, and we're going to enjoy ourselves. I think there's a lot of people excited about hearing you playing. Yeah, we've come together after all these years, and uh, you know, the last time I think we played, we'd done an album with each other, one of my solo albums. Um, but you know, it's lovely to get back. Please God, we're still here. You sound like one of my solo albums. Yeah, I know I do. And, and, you know, I just, we are going to enjoy it. Thank you, Bobby. We're Thank you, Matt. Enjoy it. <laughs> anyway, how much do we get for that? Then? How much do we get? Your reward is in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> now.
the, the organ that you used on the White Shadow Pale, was it adapted in any way? Did you engineer it? Was it just a straight off the shelf? Yes, yeah, just yeah, straight off the shelf. It was a Hammond M102, um, which was a new model at the time. They'd had the M100, the regular M100, but the M102 was different because it split in half to make it easier to carry around. You know, so um, you know the top bit lifted off the bottom bit. You know? <laughs> Didn't make it much easier to carry because the top bit weighed about a ton. And the bottom bit didn't really weigh much at all, so it was smaller, yeah. but really not much lighter. Yeah. So when you play this at the concert in, on August the 21st, what are you going to do to make get that sound as close to uh, the original? Because this is the first time in 30 years this has been this has been done. Well, um, the organ I'm playing now is a thing called a Nord. A Nord. Nord, N O R D. I think it becomes like oh, yes, Sweden yeah. or something like yeah. that. You know. So I get this instrument home eventually. You know, it's got various sounds in it. It's, it's got Hammond sounds, it's got Vox Continental sounds, it's got Farfisa sounds, it's even got a pipe organ, church organ sound. And so I start going through the presets, and I get to preset number three. It's my bloody sound. <laughs> you know, it's not, that's why the show the pile. You know, and I think. Cheeky sods, you know, they're using they're my sound. sound. That is really cheeky. Yeah, it's, cheeky. It is, yeah. it's cheeky, but what a great um, tribute to the song. What a great tribute that is. Right. Fantastic. Don't you think we've done enough? Yeah, I think so. We're tired. Oh.